Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Welcome to Top 5 from The Ray Taylor Show, where every Sunday I rank movies in a variety of categories from franchise and sub-genre to director and actors. No film is left unwatched as I break down my Top 5 picks. In this episode, I am going to be ranking my top five favorite movies from last year, 2022, as I like to do at the beginning of every year. Go back, take a look at movies that I enjoyed. There's so many movies came out. You know, you had that little stopgap during the pandemic and a flood of good movies as people, you know, theaters opened up. I didn't go see any of these in theaters, but... You know, a lot of great movies came out regardless. Uh, a lot of amazing movies and uh, so many to choose from. Obviously, uh, I, wa- I, I there's going to be movies that had come out this year, especially during the award season where a lot of good movies are released all at once. And uh, so I will usually, I did it last year and I don't see why I wouldn't do it again this year. When the nominations for Best Picture come out for the Oscars, I will be doing ranking those movies. So a lot of the times, movies that I didn't get a chance to watch for this, and movies that probably wouldn't make this list, uh, but are movies that are regarded as capital F films, you know, uh, where these movies are a personal list of the movies that touched me and impacted me the most. Uh, So I will be doing a top five of the best picture nominees for the Oscars when that comes around in a month or two. Um, So these movies, you know, aren't necessarily objectively judged on their artistic merit uh, in the same way. Uh, But uh, these films that these are the films that impacted me for sure. Uh, These are films that got me emotional. Uh, These are films that took me on a ride. Uh, And these are my favorite films, these favorite movie experiences from the year 2022. So let's get it started with my fifth favorite movie from last year. This is probably the most recent film that I've seen on this list. Uh, This is a film. All of these films are a film that I have reviewed And you can check out the full review of these films if you want to hear my in-depth thoughts on them. But this movie, coming in at number five, kind of blew me away. It's a movie that I didn't necessarily love while watching it. But once I had finished watching it, I realized that it was like, it was right up there. So coming in at number five, my fifth favorite film of 2022 is Bardot. Farce, farce. False Chronicles of a Handful of Truths, uh, written and directed by Alejandro G. Inuritu, um, and also co-written by Nicolas uh, Giacabon. This is a movie where, it's a very surreal movie, very dreamlike movie. This is a movie where our lead is somebody who is, while in this dream state, struggling with a lot of things, struggling with his, uh, you know, place in life, with his career, with his identity, uh, with himself as an artist, and floating through different ideas and relationships as dreams can float through and be very surreal and be very metaphorical to bigger issues that you might be dealing with. Uh, this is a visually amazing film, probably the best use of like super wide angle or even almost fisheye. It's, it's, it's gorgeous. It's unique. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's a movie that the dream sequences felt like they were dreams that I have literally had And I think the overall struggles that this main character is going through, I related to a lot and I connected to a lot of those things. And I think that's one of the reasons why I overall connected with this movie. It definitely felt like a movie that represented a lot of 
things that, you know, not directly, but indirectly things that I have dealt with and could relate to. And that is why, because of those personal connections, because of its beautiful look, because of its unique storytelling method uh, and visual style, all of those things combine it to combine together to be a movie that is in my opinion my fifth favorite film from last year bardot false chronicles of a handful of truths moving on to my fifth my sorry my fourth favorite film of 2022 this is a movie that i was looking forward to because i'm a fan of the director the director of this film was one of three hosts that was a host of a podcast, one of my favorite podcasts that inspired me to start podcasting. Uh, so this is a director that I am always looking forward to, a new film from him, and excited to watch it. And this is a film from a franchise that I not necessarily connected to the franchise, but this film instantly became my favorite of the franchise which you can go and check out the top five that i did of this franchise but this movie touched me emotionally it made me cheer it made me cry it made me so emotionally invested in the characters in a way that i never thought would happen for this movie this franchise this genre of film so coming in at number four is prey P-R-E-Y, the prequel Predator movie directed and written by Dan Trachtenberg. Dan Becomes a Man from the Totally Rad Show, podcast that inspired me to start podcasting over a decade ago, co-written by Patrick Allison. This movie is amazing. This movie follows... A woman who is part of an Indian, a Native American tribe, uh, I forget, Comanche tribe. And it's a character that Dan described as being, would have been in any other movie, a sidekick character. And it is a hero's journey in many ways of this girl who wants to be a warrior, who wants to live up to her family's standards of what a warrior can be. And is faced with this alien, the Predator, who's f just first time on the planet hunting the Predators, collecting his trophies, and then being confronted with this girl that uh, poses a threat to him in, in uh, uh, amazing ways. Uh, it is, as I said, my favorite Predator movie. I, I mean, I, it's argue. I mean, people can easily argue that the original Predator is better. Sure, but I was never. There's no Predator movie that that gets me as emotionally invested as this movie does, and had me cheering. There's no Predator movie that made me get emotional and cry like this Predator movie does. And for those reasons, it's my number one. People putting it anywhere other than num num the best or the second best Predator movie is kind of insane to me. But m art is subjective and everybody will have their reasons for doing whatever they do. But for me, my favorite Predator movie, uh, as I said, very emotionally invested in the lead character. Uh, it's just an emotional roller coaster. Right. Cheering, crying. My my review of that will go. You'll see a, a lot more of that in-depth stuff. Uh, ac amazing action set pieces. Great action set pieces. You have amazing actors, all, all f fairly new actors, all Native American actors. Uh, I love that this movie was initially supposed to be filmed in Native Comanche language uh, but instead was filmed in English but offered a dubbed version in Comanche which I I love that it you know despite having to compromise I would have almost loved this movie if it had done what it initially had set out to do 
But I love that at least there is the option to experience this movie in the native language that would have been spoken and that there was so much care put into making sure that the casting was accurate, making sure that the the different aspects of this movie were as accurate and paid as much respect to the original people that inhabited this country before white people slaughtered and com- committed genocide of all these people and then forced them to live in these shitty reservations. Um an amazing movie, a, a great like period piece sci-fi, right? There's not a lot of sci-fi movies that take place in the past. And I love that this movie does that. And in doing that, you see a scaled back technology that the alien has, right? Because it is also a prequel to the Predator series. So you, you can see what the Predator was like before those movies that had already come out took place amazing visual effects as well top to bottom i there's a few visual effects that you know it's not the biggest budget movie but uh some of the visual effects may be a little questionable but overall i love that movie man i loved it so much uh and highly would recommend checking out my review of it for sure uh but yeah coming in at number four my fourth favorite movie of last year 2022 is prey I want to take a quick break from the show to let you all know that there is official merch for the Ray Taylor Show. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com. You can get t-shirts, different artwork available, different designs, all on high quality materials in all the sizes there's also iphone cases made of biodegradable material that's right this is not bad for the environment this is good for the environment so all those designs that are available on t-shirts are also available on phone cases designed by me sold by me head on over to inspireddisorder.com to support the ray taylor show and promote it out in the world so all of the people in your life can see that you are a fan of the Ray Taylor show. Now, let's get back to that very show right now. Moving on to my third favorite film of last year. This is a movie that actually might be the most recent. This one may have come out before or after uh, Bardot, actually. I'm almost positive it might have. Actually may have come out the same week. Very similar. But another movie that is a more recent release. Uh, This movie was just such a fun ride. Didn't make me cry. But it was so well written. So well told. Such a fun ride. Such fun characters. And done in a way that like. uh, There's just so much. I just love this movie. Another movie that's part of a franchise now. Uh, But this movie coming in at number three, my third favorite film from 2022 is The Glass Onion, or I should say Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. There's no the. I don't know why I keep putting the in these these descriptions, but Glass Onion, written and directed by Ryan Johnson. Obviously, Knives Out, another one of my favorite movies from Ryan Johnson, a movie that's been on the top of other top five lists, uh, my yeah, I don't want to actually. I did a Ryan Johnson top five. If you want to check that out, where I ranked all of his movies, I would actually be interested to see revisit that and see where this movie would would place in that list. Uh, he also appeared on the movies released on Thanksgiving weekend, which I did this past uh, Thanksgiving. So Ryan Johnson has has shown up on multiple top five episodes. And uh, when I watched this movie after watching it, I knew it would be on my list. I just didn't know where it would. And it is sitting here at number three. It is a great follow-up to what was one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite movie of the year it came out. I love Knives Out. This is following Benoit Blanc on a new mystery and a completely different, as the first one was very overcast and cozy in an old house, old money, dealing with a family, a wealthy family. This one is very different in a lot of ways. It is bright. It is colorful. The characters, it's a plethora of characters in this movie. It's dealing with new money people, 
right? You have the you have the tech bro, you have the social media guy, you have the politician, you have the uh, fashionista, you have uh, jaded, you have a jaded uh, partner, you have a, a scientist guy. Amazing, fun story, a movie that has a twist in the middle of it that recontextualizes everything that you've seen and adds a layer of beauty to this movie that I really enjoyed. This movie is packed full of amazing artwork. Uh, so many people only focus and zero on zero in on the Mona Lisa that appears in this movie, but in every scene is a, an amazing piece of art that is ridiculous to see populate this mansion that is on this remote island that Benoit Blanc is going to initially to be uh, invited to participate in a murder mystery game that this uh, wealthy Elon Musk type guy played by Edward Norton is setting up for his friends uh, but it, he's ter immediately turns into an actual murder mystery and it's uh, just such a fun movie so, I mean, Brian Johnson, one of my favorite directors, he is such a good writer. Like, all of his movies, so well-written, so unique, too. It's not like somebody that he, like, you can tell that he, like, pushes himself with each project and, and does even more. And I think this movie is an example of that from Knives Out, which I probably enjoy more than this one, but they're both better than most movies, especially, like, there's a lot of like detective mysteries out there these days, and uh, I, I'd say Ryan Johnson's doing it better than everybody. Uh, and Benoit Blanc is by far one of my favorite like characters. You know, he's like one of my favorite characters, especially like way better than Sherlock Holmes, way better than that Augustus guy from The Pale Blue Eye. Uh, it's amazing. I can't wait for him to do more. But yeah, coming in number three. Uh, is the glass or glass onion uh, you know just s s just so much fun so funny too you know it's really funny way funnier than the first knives out uh so much fun even though there are some fun comedic moments in knives out i think this one has a much better sense of humor uh, but also smart, almost smarter, and a, f a lot of fun cameos in this movie, too. So, number three, my third favorite film of last year is Glass Onion by Ryan Johnson. Moving on to number two. There is an interesting thing that my number one and number two films have in common, which I will talk about, hopefully, and remember in my number one discussion as to not spoil my number one. But coming in at number two, my second favorite film, this movie <clears throat> not only was impacted me on a story, watching it was so much fun, was a great ride, but it's also a movie that changed my show. After watching this movie, I made drastic changes to a big aspect of this show and that movie responsible for those changes and responsible for a great time despite the runtime of this movie is the movie coming in at number two my second favorite r r r written and directed by ss raja muli co-written by vijay indira prasad just I at some point I will no, I'm never I'm always going to birch I'm sorry I butcher the names uh, but RRR aka Rise Roar Revolt is and a movie that starts at 11 and only goes up from there it's got big action it's got a big story it's got big dance scenes which is a obviously a staple in Indian films it's got larger than life characters it's the most bromanciest bromance movie in the history of cinema, which is a positive. This is like an action movie with great action scenes. It's just, it's also one of the best films 
not the best, but one of the best films to feature an adult riding on the shoulders of another adult in a scene that while watching this movie made me emotional, which is insane to contemplate. But uh, this movie is just it just has everything. This movie does everything and it does everything big. And I love it. And it inspired me. The big change it made in my show is it inspired me to get into and watch more of Indian cinema. I've watched a bunch of other SS Rajamuli stuff, Bahubili, uh, Ige, amazing films. Uh, I've watched so many amazing Indian films, and I, it introduced me, because of watching all these Indian films, it introduced me to probably one of my favorite movies of all time, which doesn't qualify because it didn't come out this last year, uh, but the movie Three Idiots, uh, my fav- one of my favorite movies, if not my favorite movie of all time, uh, is a movie that I quote. There's lines from that movie that just have made huge impacts in my life. Uh, and uh, if it wasn't for RRR, I may never have. And also, it's introduced a whole new audience to my show. My show is pop, very, has a large, like, it is as big as my American audience, if not bigger. The Indian audience that has f- discovered my show through my review. It is the most popular podcast I've produced in my 14 years of producing podcasts. My review of RRR. Not only in audio version, but in video version as well. It is crazy how out of nowhere heard a review of this movie on another podcast I listened to. I was like, I'll I'll check it out. Why not? I'll check out this movie that's over three hours long. Sure. I guess I'll do it. I'll watch a foreign film. I'll read the subtitles. Okay. Okay. And then I watched this movie. I'm like, oh, my God, I recommended this movie. I stopped recommending movies to people because I realized that nobody watches my recommendations. But after watching this movie, I couldn't help myself recommending this movie to everybody. Along with another movie that actually was reviewed the same week as this movie. But I'll get to that later. RRR, amazing. It's an epic story, epic action, friendship, love, rebellion, great dance numbers, as I said. Uh, it's, you know, it's uh, made me love SS Rajamuli, one of my new favorite directors. I'm so excited. He's gotten su- so much success and visibility from this movie. Really, this movie has opened up Indian cinema, I would say, in a lot of ways to American audiences and opened the door for him to potentially, who knows, work with American actors or produce American, which I don't necessarily need or want him to do. I think he's doing amazing work. Hopefully it will just give him more funding to produce whatever he wants. I think this dude knows how to make super entertaining movies and i can't wait to see what he does next uh but just i it's a movie that was so much fun and seeing clips of how ruckus and fun the live screenings are of this movie in theaters makes me wish i had seen it or would love to see this movie in a big screen a packed theater i would love to go to india and watch this movie right just it just seems like it would be such a fun time instead of me sitting home alone cheering and jumping up and cheering and yelling at my tv right love it watch my review that's this is my most popular thing i've ever produced aside from a zippo video uh but yeah coming in at number two rrr R- rise roar revolt Let's take a little break from the show to promote the benefits of Inspired Disorder Plus. So you go inspireddisorder.com slash plus. Sign up. $5 a month. You get to binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free. You get to watch all of the live painting videos I do. You get a special members only discount and deals for all of the artwork and merch that I sell. You also get the complete podcast back catalog of every podcast I've ever produced. Hundreds of episodes 
countless different podcasts. You also get access to my personal blog. A new blog comes out every week. In addition to that, you get my creative writing that I'm releasing. You also get access to asking me anything. 14 years of experience podcasting. I've been creating art my entire life. I've been using Photoshop since middle school. And you can contact me to ask me questions about that or anything else. So those are the benefits for signing up for Inspired Disorder Plus. And now let's get back to the show. Moving on to my favorite movie of 2022. Number one, hands down, when I saw it, when before I saw this movie, I anticipated this could be my favorite movie of the year. When I saw the movie, I confirmed this is going to be my favorite movie of the year, despite the fact this movie came out early 2022. I was like, it is going to be tough for any movie to top this one, and no movie did. I tried. I tried. RRR got the closest, but not enough, because there was one emotion and aspects of this that were just hands down better than everything else I saw. One of my favorite movies, period. Right, It became an instant classic for me, this movie. Coming in at number one, my favorite movie of last year, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, by The Daniels, directed by Dan Kwan and Daniel Sh- uh, Scheinert, written by them as well. These are the people, The Daniels made my favorite movie from 2016, Swiss Army Man. A movie that features the most amount of unique fart sounds in the history of any movie. (laughs) Uh, A a soundtrack to a movie that I love listening to purchased on vinyl. A movie that I fell in love with the creativity, the originality, and was so excited to see what these guys did next. And when this was announced, I was so excited. Right. I was so excited for this movie to see not only Michelle Yeoh as the lead to see uh, what's his face to see. Um, Ki Hoi Kwan, Ki Hai Kwan, come back data. The Indiana Jones kid to see him come back to acting. Jamie Lee Curtis is amazing in this film. Th- this movie is like a crazy movie. And made from the ground up in a way that no movies are made. That's why I love the originality of this movie and the way these guys work. Is that the way they produced it is different than how traditionally p- movies are made. And I think that's it, it noticed noticeable by the unique nature of this movie. How just amazing these guys are at direct. I want them to. I I want them to have an amazingly long career. I don't want them to ever fight. I don't want them to ever split up. I want them to continue making these amazing, original, heartfelt, funny, unique, mashup genre films. This movie is sci-fi, action, comedy, drama, romance, all rolled into one. This movie has everything. This movie goes everywhere. It's amazing. Just so original, th- what these guys are doing, and I absolutely love it. Uh, the creativity from the story to the production, like I said, uh, you know, it doesn't feel like any movie before, and it's because it's made like in- nothing before. I connect so much to this movie on just a fundamental artistic level from the ground up not doing things the old-fashioned standard way of doing things, understanding the tools you have and understanding how you know how to make a thing and creating a thing in a unique way using tools that you know how to use. I absolutely love that. And it's a great ride. This movie has so much heart. This movie made me laugh. This movie made me cry. This movie made me think. This is one of many movies that had a multiverse idea in it and I think handles the multiverse aspect in a way that nothing else even comes close to. I don't care if it's a big budget Marvel Disney piece of 
greatness, <laughs> which I did enjoy the Spider-Man movie that involved multiverses, uh, but not done in anything close to this. This is so unique, so amazing. It's a movie that could easily be spun off into a franchise of unique films based on just moments from this movie. I love that it's so surreal. I love the fight scenes. Again, amazing performances by Michelle Yeoh. New and different. We've never seen her like this. Uh, Stephanie Su, amazing as the daughter. Ki Hui Kwan, amazing as the 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 kind of her husband, but he's also playing different versions of himself from different universes. Jamie Lee Curtis goes all in on what is in many instances a ridiculous idea but goes all in in the best way this movie is complete controlled chaos where it's one of the few times where more is more right it, it defies the idea of less is more and it is a movie that also features an adult riding on the shoulders of another adult, right? Just like RRR, my number two movie, I watched and reviewed RRR and Everything Everywhere All at Once the same week. So if you watch the movie, I'm wearing the same t-shirt. I have the exact same hair. It was minutes maybe an hour between the two reviews of these two movies that are sitting here at number two and number one. Both movies feature adults riding on the shoulders of another adult, and I am emotional both times. You want to talk about an insane coincidence that I'm going to review two movies in the same week that will not only both be my number one and number two movies, not only will be doing things so different and so big, more is more, but also feature two adults riding on the shoulders of, two, of another human, and that scene will make me emotional. That is ridiculous. The level of absurdity in that sentence I just said. And that's what happened. Because number one, my favorite movie of last year, easily, easily, is Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's amazing. I love it. It's another movie that I recommended. I mean, that's the, the thing. I watched both of these movies in the same week, and I can't help myself. I'm recommending these movies to everybody. And people have heard of this movie, and they were because there was a lot of buzz when this movie came out. I was like, oh, you got to watch it. It's like, oh, I've been wanting to watch it. Yeah, it's like, oh, this other movie, RRR, you got to watch that too. And just nobody did any of these things. So it's just like, I'm not going to recommend movies. I'll talk about it. I'm going to just recommend to the people that watch and listen to my show. Right? Those are the people. But yeah, everything, everywhere, all at once, easily my number one, my favorite movie of the year, my favorite movie that I've seen in a long time, probably. I don't know. It is so amazing. I watched it again last night, and it was just so much fun. And I, I, it's, it's, it's so good, man. I cannot wait to see what these guys do next. It is just amazing. Um, so those are my list. Before I repeat and recap my top five, I do want to mention there are honorable mentions. I'm only doing top five. Most people do a top ten. Uh, but I'm going to do honorable mentions to just mention movies that I loved that I saw this year that came out this past year, I should say, uh, that didn't make the list, but easily could have if I were doing a top 10, right? So my honorable mentions for movies last year that maybe you haven't seen and, uh, I'm recommending to you, right? Cause they are also good. Obviously I would recommend my top five first, but after that, here is the bucket of goodness that I have for you. My honorable mentions from movies of 2022. Obviously, Top Gun Maverick was amazing. Watched that very recently. A really fun action movie. Not a perfect movie. I had some issues with it. Not big issues, but, you know, it's a really fun movie, but didn't make the list. Barbarian, probably my favorite horror film of the year. It's It scared me, unlike 
horror films ever do surprised startled me had me yelling at characters like i don't do uh just a, a fun scary terrifying horror movie that was a lot of fun barbarian uh decision to leave park chan wook's newest film just very artistically well done dark kind of detective mystery love story uh a great movie, but just didn't connect with me enough to be on the list. Bullet Train, a really fun action movie starring Brad Pitt. Uh, a lot of fun, interesting characters. I love the kind of tangled mess of all the storylines and how it kind of gets clarified throughout the course of the movie. Had a lot of fun watching it. Bullet Train. Slumberland is an amazing movie. So much fun. So much fun. So surreal. Another dream inspired movie. But uh, the dream space as a like a, a playground, a, a universe unto itself. And I, I loved that movie so much, uh, but obviously didn't make my list. Slumberland, so good. Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Hilarious, hilarious movie. Hilarious movie and insightful, uh, insightful movie about the, the, the severe tragedies that can happen at a, at a factory. Um, but yeah, weird, the weird, the Al Yankovic story, hilarious. Athena is amazing, amazing visually. The end of Athena is the reason why it's not on this list. The end, I think, feels like it's letting people off the hook. I didn't like the very, very, very end of this movie. Uh, but other than that, Athena is amazing. Such amazing long shots. Put on Athena. It's a French film. It's on Netflix. Put on and watch the intro to Athena. It is one super long take where you will be floored at everything you see and how it's filmed. And it is a ride. I got to tell it is such a good movie. Just didn't really like the end. So I didn't make it. But Athena is amazing. And then two films, uh, two Indian films that I watched that were amazing as well super good um, just so good uh, i watched a bunch of indian films but only a few of them were actually current i watched a lot of like i just watched what people were recommending so there's a lot of movies from all over the place uh but, but gangubai kathiawadi is an amazing film about a woman who was they sold into prostitution from her f from her fiance and rose up and was able to create a life and become a powerful woman for change in India. It is a gorgeous, the cinematography of Gangubai Kathiawadi is amazing. The story is amazing. The acting, my favorite female performance of the year from Gangubai Kathiawadi, uh, an actress that's been in a bunch of stuff, somebody that was completely sidelined in the Brahmastra uh, superhero, Indian superhero movie. Uh, but Gangu by Kathiawati, amazing film, highly recommend it, absolutely gorgeous. And then KGF Chapter 2. Uh, it's a sequel in the KGF franchise of movies. Uh, the first movie was good. I love KGF Chapter 2. It is a movie, a rise, it's a movie about this guy who grows up poor, but decides to make a name for himself make a brand for himself and be like gain money and power and it's this rise i mean the first movie is a lot about his rise to power and capturing of the power and the second film is what happens next and it's amazing as he's running a giant mine in india gold mine and it's it's great action great drama great franchise I mean, uh, an amazing character rocky the the lead character the main character that's the focus of the franchise is great uh but yeah kgf chapter two way better than the first one and definitely one of my favorite movies action movies so good so a couple indian films as well that again if not for rrr wouldn't have seen them so those are my honorable mentions but let me go through and recap my top five movies of last year one more time. This is my top five movies from 2022. Number five is Bardot, False Chronicles of a Handful of Truths. Number four is Prey. Number three is Glass Onion. Number two is RRR. 
And my number one favorite movie from 2022 is Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Let me know how you would rank your top five movies of last year. I would love to hear it. Let me know what movies I missed that I need to watch. Uh, obviously, there's tons. I can't watch everything. Cannot. Especially coming out at the end of the year, you just can't do it. Uh, is there anything I missed? Let me know. I hope you enjoyed my rankings and analysis of my top five, whether you agree with me or not. But uh, I enjoyed making this list and recommending these films. And don't forget to join the conversation by leaving your comment or rating on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. Until next week, see you again next Sunday for more Top 5. Get on my shoulders! New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.